This is the Artisol D16. It is Artisol's latest 15.6 inch pen display. I really like the smaller version, the Artisol D13. So how does this one stack up? Let's check it out. This is a review unit that was provided to me by the folks over at Artisol. This drawing tablet is a pen display. What does that mean? It's a monitor that plugs into your Windows or Mac computer and you can draw on it. Now, over the past year or so, I've become a big fan of these 15 inch drawing tablet monitor type displays. And the reason why is they're small enough to be maneuverable, but larger than say a 13 inch display. Oftentimes when I'm drawing a line, I wanna just turn the tablet a little bit so I can get the arc just right, just the way I want it. I can always rotate the canvas, but Sometimes it's easier just to adjust the tablet a little bit. 15 inches lets you do that, but it's obviously a bigger screen than 13 inches. That bigger screen means that the interface is larger, so it's easier to hit your layers or change a tool. The resolution on that screen is a full HD, 1920 by 1080, and the screen looks good. It's 94% Adobe RGB. I'll be honest here, I am not the best when it comes to color accuracy. That is not my area of expertise, but this screen does pass my look test. I think it looks good. Now there aren't a lot of settings that you can fiddle with on the screen. There is a brightness adjustment, but there's not a way to adjust color or that sort of thing. The finish on the screen itself is a smooth anti-glare finish. There's some resistance when you're drawing, but not a ton. I also found that occasionally my hand would stick a little bit when I was kind of dragging it across and drawing a line. So it might be worth picking up one of those handy dandy drawing gloves if that sort of thing bothers you. We also have hotkeys along the side and this quick dial, which is handy for increasing, decreasing brush sizes or zooming in and out toggling between tools. It also comes with these handy clips. You can plug them into the side and it becomes a pen holder. So you always know where your pen is. Speaking of the pen, how is it? In a word, great. I really liked the pen. I also like the pen on the Artisol D13. And this one I think is just as good. On a lot of tablets, I'm always doing tests, trying to figure out where I can find a hint of wobble or what I have to do to kind of quote unquote, break the pen. I'm looking for that jitter. Where does that jitter occur? And, and on this pen, it's just not there. It's non-existent. You get a super smooth Wacom quality line in a non-Wacom tablet. I was impressed. Slow angled lines, hatching, nowhere bumps or curves. It's really good. There are 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity in this pen, which isn't the highest out there, but it definitely is good enough to get the job done. I also think it holds pressure well. It doesn't feel like the pressure blows out at a certain point or a certain place in the pressure curve. It never comes on too strong. It's easy to hold a consistent width ink line when I'm drawing. The initial activation force on this tablet was also very good. I was surprised. I did not expect that, but it picks up really super light lines well. Anytime I'm using a drawing tablet, the main thing that I personally am looking for is how well the pen performs. And I think that's where this one excels. So for me and my preferences, this is one of the best better ones out there. As expected, there is some parallax here, but this is just on par with some of the other Wacom alternatives out there that I've tested. There is some displacement between where the pen tip is and where the cursor appears underneath it. This pen does not have tilt recognition, but one quirk I did run into is some of the Photoshop brushes I was using that did have tilt were doing some weird things. They were kind of like fuzzing out here and there. It wasn't a big deal for me. I just grabbed some brushes that didn't have tilt in them. Another feature worth mentioning here is the stand. Yeah, it comes with its own stand right there in the box. It has an adjustable back foot. You can adjust it to pretty much any angle. Some angles, super solid. Your tablet is not gonna budge. At other angles, occasionally you will feel it's sliding slightly if you apply a little too much pressure to the screen. It has these rubbery feet to give it some traction. Maybe my desk is a little smoother than a lot of other desks out there anyway. It's a minor problem. Uh, the stand overall is nice and I love the fact that it is included so you don't have to pay another, you know, 40 bucks for it. So what are the cons? I think when I'm looking at this compared to other Wacom alternatives that are about the same size and in the same price range, I'm just not seeing very many cons here. If we look at something like Gaiomon's 15 inch display, it has a screen protector. You might prefer that matte texture feel when drawing. I personally like the stand on the XP Pen 15 a little better, but that is a stand that gets screwed into the back. So if you're gonna be carrying something around a lot, you might not like that. But for me, I really like the way this thing handles lines. The smoother the line, the better. Uh, for a lot of people's artwork, you know, if you're, you have a more painterly style, it's something you're probably not gonna notice with any of these tablets. If if you're doing a lot of inking, that is something you notice, and that's definitely something that I notice. I think all three of the 15 inch tablets that I've used are very good, but like I said, because I ink a lot, I really appreciated this one. Now, if you compare this to the 16 inch Cintiq Pro, you don't have nearly as 
many levels of pressure sensitivity if you're into that sort of thing. You also don't have tilt functionality on the pen. You don't have a touch screen. You're gonna get a lot more parallax on something like this than you would on a Wacom Cintiq Pro. You also have a much, much higher resolution when you go over to a Cintiq Pro as well. And then there's little quality issues. For example, Wacom screen is etched glass. That's gonna hold up really, really well. But at the end of the day, you gotta pay for that. The Cintiq Pro 16 costs three times more than this. So if you can't afford it and you don't mind cutting some of those corners, this one is definitely worth checking out. If you're interested in any of those other tablets that I was just mentioning, check out down below on my website. There are links to some of the reviews I've done of those and also links to those products themselves. So if you wanna check them out, do some comparison yourself, check out that link. And if you have any comments and questions, as always, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I'd like to thank everybody who supports this channel over on Patreon and also anybody who clicks on any of my Amazon links from my website or this YouTube channel. Those sort of things help me keep doing reviews and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in a few days.